Hi, my name is Dylan and welcome back to another chapter of the Barron's AP Economics book. In this video, I'll be covering chapter 10 and what you need to know for the AP exam. Here's what you need to know for this chapter. You need to know what economic efficiency is, what the profit maximizing and the loss minimizing level of output is, what the shutdown point is, what a perfect competition graph looks like, how perfect competition reacts in the long run, and what consumer and producer surpluses look like in perfect competition. There are some requirements an industry must meet to be considered perfect competition. First off, the industry has to be such, so that the firms can sell as much of the good as they can produce at an equilibrium price. This means that price is equal to marginal revenue, so that the additional revenue of the good is equal to the price of the good itself. In perfect competition, firms also need to produce at a point where price equals marginal cost, or the cost of producing one more good is equal to the revenue gained from that good. And in perfect competition, firms produce at the minimum average total cost, because in equilibrium, no firms enter or leave the industry. Firms also make no money in the long run. They only have normal profits. They are, they're also price takers. They take the prices from the market, and they have no power to change the price they sell at. This means that the demand function for each firm is perfectly elastic, because the firms are small enough for... They, they, don't, they don't have any price making power, so they can sell as much as they want at equilibrium price. And lastly, they sell identical products. The profit maximizing or loss minimizing output for any firm is always at MR is equal to MC, or the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. This is because if the marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, the firm should make more goods to make more money. This is because your, the additional revenue from each good is greater than the cost of producing it. However, if the marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue, then the firm is spending more money to produce goods than it gains from the goods, so they should cut back on production. An important thing to know for the AP test is the graph of a perfectly competitive firm. The graph of a perfectly competitive curve starts with the ATC and AVC curves. So I'm going to draw the axis here. Here is the average total cost curve looks like this, and the average variable cost curve is right under it. The average total cost curve is a parabola with an absolute minimum point right here. It's initially downsloping because production becomes more efficient as it the, as the price of producing goods initially decreases. But the, the but the costs will eventually rise as overcrowding and other effects occur. The average variable cost is similar, but with the minimum point shifted slightly to the left. And you don't need to draw an average fixed cost curve because it's not that important to know for perfect competition concepts. And it's also modeled by the difference between the average total cost and the average variable cost. This gap here is also is the average fixed cost. Now, mo marginal cost is a check mark curve passing through the, the average total cost and average variable cost curves at the minimum points. And it's important to know that the average total cost curve and the average variable cost curve, the shapes are based off of the marginal cost curve. If the marginal cost, let's say right here, is lower than the average total cost, this means that the additional cost producing a good is less than the average cost, which means that the average cost is going to drop. And even though marginal cost will rise right here, it's still lower than the average total cost, and so the average total cost will keep dropping. Right here, the marginal cost is equal to the average total cost, so the cost of producing good is equal to the average cost, and eventually, as marginal cost rises, average total cost will rise along with it. The same thing occurs at the average variable cost curve. Now, the marginal revenue is equal to the demand function for the for the firm. It's, it's just perfectly horizontal, and this is the marginal revenue. So this is what a graph, a perfectly competition graph looks like. And you need to know this for the AP exam because they will ask a lot of questions on it. This whole, The marginal revenue line will intersect marginal cost and average total cost at the minimum point on the average total cost curve. And price is on the y-axis and quantity is on the x-axis. However, in the short run, price is not always equal to average total cost. Sometimes the price of the good is lower than the average total cost, incurring a short-term loss. However, the firm should still produce as long as it doesn't meet the shutdown criteria. 
If the price of the good is greater than the variable cost to make it, the firm should keep producing because it's covering the cost of production. Since fixed costs are only paid once, the cost of production after paying the fixed cost is just the average variable cost. Eventually the price will readjust so the firm can also cover its total costs because some other firms will leave the industry, decreasing the supply of the good and raising the price. The firm also less, loses less money by producing because if it shuts down, it loses all of the money it spends, spends on fixed costs. By staying in business, the small profit on average variable costs helps offset the loss on fixed costs. However, the price, if the price of the good is lower than the average variable cost, the firm should shut down because it's spending more money producing goods than it's taking in. This is known as the shutdown criteria. If price is less than average variable cost, the firm should shut down. In this case, by producing, the firm loses even more money than its fixed cost because it also loses money by producing. Perfect competition achieves economic efficiency by being allocatively and productively efficient. Allocatively efficient means that the perfect competition produces as much goods as society desires or at the point where price is equal to marginal cost. At this point, the value of the good or price is equal to the cost of producing one additional of it, unit of it. If marginal cost is less than price, it means that the cost of the good is being underproduced because the value society places on it is higher than the additional cost of producing it. If marginal cost is greater than price, then it's being overproduced because the additional cost of producing the good is higher than the societal value. Productively efficient means that the perfect competition produces good at the, goods at the lowest price possible or at the minimum average total cost. Now, Perfect competition will react in the long run based on certain situations in the short run. Now, as I said before, sometimes firms don't make money. Sometimes they lose money in the short run. So let's take a scenario where it's, let's draw a perfect competition graph. This is average total cost, average variable cost, um, marginal cost, and marginal revenue. I'm going to label the curves really quickly. This is marginal revenue. This is average variable cost. This is a marginal cost. This is average total cost. So as you can see right now, this is marginal revenue is equal to price. And right now, it's lower than the average total cost. So the firm is losing money. However, right now, it's greater than average variable cost. So the firm will stay in production. However, some firms will leave the industry because they're losing money and they, they probably can make more money elsewhere. So what happens is, in the industry, the supply of the good will decrease. So right now this is your normal demand and supply graph. Demand, supply. And as you can notice, this the price right here is equal to the equilibrium price. So let's let's say so as we as I, as I was saying, the supply of the good will decrease because those firms are losing money. And so what happens is it decreases the supply of the good. What this does is it decreases the equilibrium quantity but it raises the equilibrium price. And so the new price is right here. Or, uh, sorry about this line. It should equal exactly where um, price marginal cost intersects marginal average average total cost at the minimum point. And it's the firm, so it should end up making normal profits in the long run. So this is how perfect competition reacts. It can also react the other way. If a firm is making money, what happens is the supply of the good will increase because more firms will see that firms are making money and they'll enter. And it'll, this will increase the supply of the good and then it's, it will decrease the price to the equilibrium point. Now, consumer surplus and producer surplus. I talked about this before, but we. It, it, it also exists in a perfect competition, and we can see it on the graph. Consumer surplus is just the area under under the demand curve, but above the equilibrium price. And this is basically um, the a consumer right here is willing to pay this much money, but they only pay this much. And the consumer surplus is just the area of every single one of these consumers who want to pay more, but don't but don't pay them more. And producer surplus is this area right here, and it's the difference between how much the producer is willing to sell and how much they actually do. A producer right here is willing to sell for a very low price, but they end up selling at this price because of the equilibrium price. And the, the whole area is called the producer surplus. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.